Hello and welcome to live Barclays Women's Super League coverage of Brighton versus Manchester City from the Broadfield Stadium. The Seagulls have won just one of their 10 WSL meetings with the citizens. That sole victory did come the last time the pair met, though, with a 1-0 Brighton success at City earlier this season. However, Gareth Taylor's side are on a nine-match winning streak in the league and will want to keep their title hopes alive. Well, Brighton have only managed one win from their last 10 home games in the Women's Super League, and that was a 3-2 success against struggling Bristol City in January. They did win 7-3 last time out in the league, though, against City, their most ever goal scored in a game in the competition, and more than they've scored across their nine league games prior combined. As mentioned, Gareth Taylor's side arrive on a fine winning streak and only Joe Montemurro and Jonas Eidevel have a higher win rate in WSL history than the City boss who has won against 25 of the 26 managers he's faced in the competition. The only exception was the former Brighton boss, Melissa Phillips, who was replaced by Mikey Harris earlier this year. All of their nine WSL games have resulted in a Manchester City victory. So this is how the weekend in the Barclays Women's Super League has panned out so far. Chelsea beating Arsenal 3-1 in the big head-to-head -head clash of the weekend. Yesterday, Aston Villa saw off Everton by two goals to one. And we've already got a couple of 12 o'clock kickoffs today, UK time in the league. Liverpool goalless with West Ham United. And Nelson has put Manchester United in front against Bristol City. Later on, Spurs face Leicester. And this is what it means for the standings at the moment. Chelsea's victory has moved them three points clear of Manchester City again. However, City will move level on points with them with a victory. And if they uh, manage to muster a six-goal win, they would even go top of the standings. Brighton are looking to climb above Leicester City into eighth in the table. Well, the Brighton and Hove Albion forward, Turland has uh, been in fine form. She has registered over half of the Seagulls' 20 league goals this season. The only player to net at least half of her side's goals this term. And only Khadija Shaw and Lauren James have scored more in the WSL season than Elizabeth Turland. One of the major reasons that she's doing so well in front of goal, Tatiana Pinto's link-up play, she plays just in the pocket, and that has been a major factor in Brighton's attacking might this term. As mentioned, Khadija Shaw with 15 league goals this season. She scored six in four appearances against Brighton in the WSL as well, including four goals in a 7-2 win in 2022. Only three other players have scored four or more goals in a WSL game. Lauren Hemp has seven for the season in the WSL, and two of those goals have come in her last three games in the league, including the vital winner last time out against Everton, which ensured that Manchester City remained within touching distance of Chelsea at the summit. And Manchester City have won all four of their away games against Brighton in the WSL by an aggregate score of 21-2, and they have scored six or more in three of those matches, so it isn't beyond the realms of possibility that they could get a healthy enough advantage today to move to the top of the table. Has uh, not been the greatest period for Manchester City recently, given their cup exits. They found themselves knocked out of both competitions in the space of just three days. First, Chelsea beat Gareth Taylor's side 1-0 in the League Cup semi-final, which was played on home turf for City as well. And then Spurs knocked them out of the FA Cup after 
Beth England made the most of a mix-up to cancel out Mary Fowler's early goal. That sent the game to penalties with Spurs coming out on top to reach the semis of the competition. Means that Manchester City have failed to progress from the FA Cup quarter-finals for the first time in the club's history. So Gareth Taylor's team looking to fly back to the summit as they aim to bounce back with the Women's Super League, their last chance of earning some silverware this season. Brighton's campaign, meanwhile, has been an impressive one, and they are certainly safe from the drop. Well, Brighton and Hove, Albion host to Manchester City, knowing that history is not on their side. They've made a bit of a dog's dinner of recent home games against them. But City arrive a wounded animal after those cup exits, losing to Chelsea in the League Cup and then going out on penalties to Tottenham Hotspur. Both sides actually head into this game off the back of a FA Cup quarter-final exit with Mikey Harris's team suffering a 4-0 reverse to the other Manchester side when they were thumped by United, while, as mentioned, City eliminated on penalties by Spurs. Plenty at stake then for City, who can't afford anything less than three points at the Broadfield Stadium if they want to keep up with league leaders Chelsea after the reigning champions cruise to that 3-1 win over London rivals Arsenal at Stamford Bridge on Friday. Right, no, won't make it easy. They have shown this season that they are certainly on an upward curve. Big blow, though, for Brighton this afternoon without striker Pauline Bremer, who is a Germany international and former Manchester City player. She is absent through injury. Two alterations in all to the team who were beaten by Manchester United in the FA Cup last weekend, with Sarri moving to the bench. Carabali and Halley are the duo who come in. Philippa Angeldahl is missing for Manchester City this afternoon. Gareth Taylor says that she's absent due to a slight hamstring problem. So the one alteration sees Laura Coombs slotting in in midfield. Khadija Shaw has a terrific record against Brighton and Hove Albion. Six goals in four games against the Seagulls in the league. So... Can Manchester City keep pace with Chelsea at the top of the Barclays Women's Super League? Chelsea laying down the gauntlet with the way that they swatted Arsenal aside on Friday. Gareth Taylor said he did watch that game, was impressed with Chelsea, but backed his side to respond today. Their campaign reached a turning point last week, really, and not a positive one. On Monday, their treble hopes were still well and truly alive, but that midweek defeat to Chelsea ended their Conti Cup dreams, and then another loss to Spurs subsequently put a stop to their FA Cup run in dramatic fashion, meaning that the only piece of silverware that they can win this season is the WSL. They'll have to be on top form for the remainder of the season, and Brighton will definitely pose a stern test under Mikey Harris this afternoon as well. Our referee today is Megan Wilson and Elizabeth Turlan looking to add to her tally this term. What a season she is having for the Seagulls. The Norwegian who uh, joined Albion in the summer of 2022 has uh, really shone for Mikey Harris's team this term. Khadija Shaw, one of the few players ahead of her in the scoring charts this season. 15 goals for Shaw to 11 for Turland. There is Megan Wilson, our referee. And on her whistle, the players, match officials and coaching staff take a knee.
So Manchester City in their change trip this afternoon, kicking from right to left in this first half and looking for the three points that would definitely move them level on points with Chelsea. And a six-goal victory would actually move them out in front on goal difference. Asagawa has been tripped. That is Elizabeth Turlan who has made the foul. Asagawa here. Well, just the uh, slightest of nudges in the back from Turlan. Wahabi. Greenwood. Not really much of a reshuffle for Manchester City tactics wise. Laura Coombs will slot into the position that Angledahl normally occupies, so not too much readjustment for Manchester City. But uh, it is certainly a setback for Brighton to be without their Germany international and former Manchester City player Pauline Bremer. Greenwood touched off by Laura Coombs. Here's Greenwood again. Only one victory in their 10 WSL meetings with Manchester City for Brighton, but that sole victory did come the last time the pair met when they were victorious by a goal to nil at City. Spread nicely for Lauren Hemp. Hemp on the drive. Manchester City monopolising possession early on. Greenwood's fizz ball in. Not the intended clearance from Tatiana Pinto, but it is a Manchester City corner. Well, recycled nicely by Ua Harvey and then drilled into the area by Alex Greenwood and behind off Tatiana Pinto. Alex Greenwood with this corner then for Manchester City. In from the City skipper. Fowler was up there. Coombs goes back. On from Kasparite. Patient stuff from City, looking for the gaps. They might have found one here as well. Park on the run. Fowler. Fowler. Well, that's an intelligent ball. Back across by Hemp. Nervy times for Brighton. Strong start this from Manchester City. You may well have a point to prove after those back-to-back -back cup exits. Greenwood, Hasegawa. It's uh, well won by Lasada. But Brighton can't keep hold of the ball. Kasper in a hurry with the throw. Kiara Keating, who was involved in a mix-up for that late goal that England scored in the FA Cup game that went to that penalty shootout, which City lost. Warren Alexandri getting in a bit of a muddle. Fowler. Park couldn't quite get there in time, but again, he's back in City's possession. City have won. Ooh. Four of their away games against Brighton and Hove Albion in the WSL by an aggregate score of 21 2. Scoring six or more in three of those matches. Mikey Harris said that rather than being fearful, they were looking forward to the challenge of taking on the title contenders. Certainly looks like a 
two-horse race now following that defeat for Arsenal to Chelsea. So that he enjoyed watching the game on Friday. They may well have been hoping for a different outcome. Wahabi back to Keating. Keating. Here's Greenwood. Lair Alexandri. Hasegawa. Alexandri has to be careful. Greenwood, big switch, lovely pass. Bagley retreating. And turned out to be the right call. There's an excellent pass from Greenwood to set Hemp away. She raises her thumb in acknowledgement of that pass made to measure. Hemp went for the lobbed finish but didn't get enough elevation on it. While they have suffered those uh, cup defeats recently, they come here on a mightily impressive run in the WSL, including winning all of their last four away games, keeping a clean sheet in the last two of them. Actually haven't won three in a row without conceding on the road in the league since uh, May of 2022. Kasperi prepared to adventure here down the flank and gets the corner out of Zigiotti. At the moment, it is pretty much one-way traffic. Mikey Harris hoping to try and alter the pattern of the game. <laughs> Couldn't make it stick there, Madison Haley. Back to Kiara Keating. City have actually won all of their nine WSL games since uh, suffering back-to-back -back league defeats in November. Only once before as the team won ten in a row in a single women's Super League campaign, and it was Manchester City who did so themselves in the 2020 to 21 season. Twelve in a row that time around. Back against them, topping that. Here's Park. Park again. Well, Harvey was up there, which might mean they're a bit light at the back. Madison Haley. Free kick. Bright in a hurry to get on with it. Back from Bergsram. Back a lead. Torres Dott here. Well, good vision, but it was well anticipated by Greenwood. And City quickly onto it. Jess Park. Hasegawa. to be careful because Coombs is quickly on to her. Risky, give it away to him. Hasegawa. Oh, that's a missed opportunity for City after Brighton coughed the ball up. Certainly advantage Chelsea in the WSL title race after that victory on Friday. They really overpowered Arsenal, didn't they? Since then, Everton were uh, held off by Aston Villa, which moved uh, Villa up to seventh in the table. Certainly no relegation worries for them. And the win 
for City today would pretty much rule Arsenal out of the title race. Be incredibly hard for Jonas Eidevall's side to make up six points on two separate clubs. Keating. Park advancing. Coombs. Oh, she's been crunched there by Carapalli. The Colombian came flying in. Megan Wilson couldn't have had a better view of it. None of the ball and all of Jess Park. Up goes short. Well, she got the touchdown, but there was nobody in the city shirt near enough to make the most of it. Hemp challenging, Robinson collecting. Well, that's a loose touch by Greenwood. And Sada almost had her pocket picked. coming across to close down. Fowler's won it. Brighton get the ball. Loses out, but picking up the pieces is Tatiana Pinto. I haven't seen too much of her in her role just off Elizabeth Turland so far. Probably expected as uh, much as well. Very different game for Brighton compared to their last WSL outing. That 7-3 success away at Bristol City. And Turland helped herself to a couple. Pinto got on the score sheet as well. Scored three of their seven goals post the 89th minute, which uh, certainly added a decent amount of gloss to the scoreline. Well, I haven't seen much of the ball, but he'll be pleased with their organisation and discipline in terms of the shape that they've adopted when out of possession, which has been a fair amount. Hasegawa. It's a nice pass to find Jess Park, but she's lost her way, and Brighton tried to get it quickly up towards Katie Robinson. Not many would have expected that this game would see two of the top strikers in the WSL this season going head-to-head. -head. Khadija Shaw would uh, always be a likely candidate to be up there, but Elizabeth Turland's having a terrific campaign, that double against Bristol City, moving her on to 11 for the season. She and uh, Shaw both waiting for their first opportunity of this game to arrive. Greenwood rolled out to Lauren Hemp. Greenwood again. Opens up here. Oh, Harvey still going. Oh, Harvey. Alexandri. Oh, 
Greenwood for him. Well, Taylor was uh, saying that this is obviously the one competition that they have left to play for. Outside of what Chelsea have done with lifting the WSL crown, nobody's done it for a long time, and they're proud to be right in the mix. League form has been fantastic. Well, there was disappointment about the cup exits. He said the margins were tight in both of those games. And he's also expecting it to be nip and tuck today. Megan Wilson just uh, sorting something out. Not entirely clear what it was. Well, running repairs on Alex Greenwood, which is uh, why there was uh, a bit of hesitation from the referee. Hopefully, nothing to do with wrong coloured socks. Here's Keating. Fowler. Now Taylor was saying that the fact that they've got an opportunity to go level at the top is really exciting. And if you'd offered them that with, uh, what, seven games to go, they would have bitten your hand off for that. Almost managed to find the run of Robinson. Carapali trying to get up there, Robinson as well. Turland! Well, the first shot on target comes from Brighton and Hove Albion. And of course, it was Elizabeth Turland who had the pop at goal. Well, the flag was raised in any event. Brighton contested that. Turland, though, showing what she's capable of with the sharp snapshot. Well, they are missing uh, Angledar today due to injury. Gareth Taylor was um, stressing that he isn't stressing about it. He says it's just a slight hamstring complaint that she's had the last couple of days and he, he doesn't think that she'll be out for too long. Greenwood is back on after whenever the issue with her apparatus was, was sorted. Alexandri, Shaw. Well, that's a little bit loose. Shaw getting back there to try and help out and has given away the free kick. Lasada's free kick then. And it's a useful one too. Greenwood was up there. Didn't deal with it properly though, City, and they get a little bit lucky. It's a good period this for Brighton. First time that they've had some regular visits to that Manchester City penalty area. looked on side to me in uh, blue and white and uh, Greenwood's glancing touch didn't do the job of clearing the ball and it created half an opening which uh, wasn't taken by Guro Berg's van Hasbrai doing just about enough Coombs They've had 
a lot more of the ball Manchester City but yet to seriously test Sophie Bagley in the Brighton goal and you felt that Brighton would be able to take something from their win in the reverse fixture into today and perhaps uh, just as much the fact that they kept a clean sheet in that game at City which they've yet to do again since in the league this season Hemp. that's a good looking ball need to do what they did in that game again today against Gareth Taylor's side resolute in defense they were under a lot of pressure earlier on in the campaign in that match but Sophie Bagley had a great game and would have thought she'd need to be on top of her game today for Bright to get anything but as we approach the midway point of the first half it's that fairly tame effort from Lauren Hemp that she's had to field Greenwood is Orhavi and again sure slipped in nicely for Park wide for Fowler Right, right, and get plenty of blue and white back there. Park, Fowler, Casper. I wanted it. Fowler keeps it. And Fowler tries to deliver. And Gareth Taylor looking for a response from City today after that tough week. Motivation from those cup exits for sure but also the pressure of knowing that they cannot afford a slip-up as Chelsea's relentless march towards retaining the title took another step forwards with their victory over Arsenal on Friday. Greenwood. Right. Now Alexandri Hasegawa. Shaw Hasegawa again. Out to Ohavi. Hemp. <laughs> well, Carapali used their strength there to just nudge Hemp off the ball. Greenwood. Now that's broken the way of Zigiotti. Clever pass to find Haley. Lasada. Torres Dot here. Vicky Lasada. Guru Bergsva. Bergsvart, Haley. Well, you can see what she was trying to do, but Katie Robinson just caught in her heels, otherwise might have led to something for Brighton. Well, they've been starved of possession, but when they've had the ball in and around the city area, they've looked fairly inventive. Madison Haley trying to pick the lock there. Keating waits. Keating gets it back. That's the gamma. 
Greenwood. Just about enough lift on that to find its way to Coombs, but she's been caught in possession. Cut back from Robinson, intercepted by Greenwood. Back to Keating. That's good stuff from Brighton so far. Interim manager Mikey Harris will be pleased with how the first 25 minutes has gone. Took over after Melissa Phillips was uh, sacked. Cleared by Alexandri, but Brighton now pushing a bit higher up and putting the squeeze on Manchester City, committing more bodies up there when they were prepared to sit and be a bit passive early on. Challenging Manchester City to escape the press, which Kasparai has done here. That's come for Lasada though. Lasada. All risky. Hasegawa was there. Lovely pass. Hemp onto it. Bagley across, but can't keep it out. And Lauren Hemp gives Manchester City the lead. Scores in back-to-back -back games, the England international. And just relieves a few nerves for Manchester City as Gareth Taylor's side was starting to find it a bit tricky. Sophie Bagley was in fine form in the game away at Manchester City earlier this season. I just think she might have been a bit disappointed here. Fowler to Jess Park, who spotted the run of Hemp. It's an excellent pass from there, and having got a hand to it, I imagine that Bagley will be disappointed not to have kept it out. Brighton nil, Manchester City won. Chelsea's biggest challengers are in front at Brighton. Eight for the campaign now for Lauren Hemp in the WSL. Three goals in her last four matches. She got the decisive one against Everton in City's last league game. And has the opener at Brighton today. The irony being that that goal came at a time when Brighton were probably enjoying their best period of the match. Torres Dott here, risky. It has smuggled it across to Carabali. He was interested, doesn't quite come her way. Hatagawa under pressure from Carabali. Uhabi. Back to Keating. Hatagawa. Park. Here's Alexandri. Now Kasparai. Keating for Alex Greenwood. <laughs> Heavy touch, Shaw was onto it, but couldn't make anything of it. Well, Brighton just have to be a bit careful here because they have been very much in the game but looked like they may have been rocked somewhat by the concession of that goal scored by Lauren Hemp. Sada. And that's rebounded favourably, and then it's given away by Greenwood. Caraballi to have a go, and she didn't really catch it properly. 
Kind of was there to be hit by Horalin Caraballi, the Colombian fullback. Eighth appearance in the league for her this uh, season, having joined over the summer from Athletic Mineria. Yet to score in the WSL. Did uh, get one in the League Cup earlier on this season when they were victorious at Charlton Athletic. Back it goes from Lauren Hemp. Here's Greenwood. Half an hour played. Well won. Turlin closed down quickly by Greenwood. Hasegawa picks it up. Now, here goes Hemp. And still. Great run, and the hit deflected behind off Bergsvan. Well, surging stuff here from him, who ate up the ground, but her ping goalwards was into Guru Bergsvan. Hasegawa. Opens up for the hit from Coombs. Robinson did very well against Hasegawa. Hasegawa tried to nick it back, didn't do so. The pass is on, and she couldn't pick out the run of Kulbert, who was offside anyway. Well, a rampaging run from Katie Robinson. And Emma Kulper was the target in the centre. Looks on side to me there, as it was that came to nothing for Brighton, but had she managed to control it, they may well have been spewing about the flag going up. Greenwood. Here is Wahabi. Greenwood back to Keating. Kersing Kasparai now. Kersing Stan City would be level on points with uh, Chelsea at the summit. But uh, still behind them on goal difference. Four adrift of them at the moment and uh, behind on goals scored as well. So it needs another five here this afternoon unanswered to go back above Chelsea. Greenwood. Well met by Bergsman. Park onto it. And still Park. Super run this. And then in the end, smuggled behind by Lasada. It's not been dissimilar to the reverse fixture. Bright defending really well. And uh, it's a prime example of it, ensuring that there was no way through for Park. Fowler with this corner then. Ten to go till the break. And he stayed and it's off the line. Corner kick. 
I think it was Greenwood's header at the far post. Back across from the skipper Greenwood and cleared off the line by Zigiotti. Shaw was waiting, but so was Carapalli. Manchester City have avoided defeat in their last 12 matches when scoring the opening goal in the WSL. It's a run that goes back to April of last year against Arsenal. Park for Shaw. That's a good piece of work by Bergsman, although Shaw recycles. Fowler. Now Kasparai. Only half clear by Bergsman. Hasegawa. Greenwood. Brighton could probably do with half-time, just to reset and uh, recalibrate a bit. And City, you get the feeling, sense that there's the opportunity for a nerve-settling second goal. was a robust challenge. Coombs feeling the full force of it. Well, the last set, set piece that Manchester City had to that header that was cleared off the line from Alex Greenwood. Greenwood taking this free kick. Short up there and sends it over. So Gareth Taylor's side on course to go back level on points with uh, Chelsea. Signed a new three-year deal recently through to the summer of 2027. Had signed a one-year extension in June of last year. Said at the time that they'd been in a transitional period over the last 12 months. He wanted more from his team, said they didn't do enough against Spurs when they were eliminated on penalties. Here's Park. Coombs in there. Breaks for Hasegawa. Greenwood. Here's Greenwood. Kasparai. Around the corner for Kasparai, who will get to it. Shaw waits for it. Kasparai goes for it. Bagley with the save. Hemp. Wahabi. Well, that was a bit late by Shaw, so Brighton will have a free kick and a chance to relieve the pressure. And skipper Lasada was clattered. Shimpad came out. Well, this was the chance. Kasparai saw the opportunity to chance her arm. It's heading in, isn't it, until Bagley gets across to parry to safety. Good try from Kasparai. Oh, in from Hemp. Fowler! Manchester City double their lead. Mary Fowler arriving to smash into the net beyond Bagley. And Gareth Taylor's side have clear daylight now.
Lauren Hemp scored the first. She sets up the second. The clearance from Bagley. And then the quick one-two between Coombs and Hemp, who spotted Fowler. And she did the rest clinically. Great give and go, wasn't it? Brilliant ball in. And an expert finish from Fowler. And that could be a very, very vital goal for Manchester City. As Brighton have an awful lot to do now to stop them leaving here with the three points. So it's potentially two errors that have led to the goals, though, for Brighton. Bagley may well have done better with the finish from Hemp, and then it was her clearance that went straight to a City player. Here's Caravalli. Not enough legs on that to reach Robinson, and it came off Robinson last, so City will have the goal kick. Tall order now for his side well she has a puff of the cheeks there perhaps still thinking about those goals and uh, what she might have been able to do a bit better with Greenwood Asagawa Looking for him. Next uh, game for Manchester City is the small matter of the derby against uh, United next Saturday. And they still have Arsenal to come in the WSL as well. Hemp putting the squeeze on Bergsman. And she's won it back well. And here's Khadija Shaw, unselfish. Fowler had a shy at goal. Brighton have got a player down. Took the full force of uh, that did Bergsman. Super industry again from Lauren Hemp to win the ball and get it back to Khadija Shaw, who then teed up Fowler. First round caught in possession, Hemp's passed to Shaw, who controlled it nicely. And actually, it was Emma Cooper who was smacked in the face by Fowler's effort. Go, 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 go. Bagley. Sigiotti, Tarabali. Over the top for the run of Robinson. Oh, Robinson might get onto it. City won a handball. Greenwood. Greenwood. Turlan. Closing down the space as we go into the final minute of regulation time in the first half. <laughs> Haley, Lasada, Torres Dotti, Cooper. Way through for Tatiana Pinto. Casper's throw for Manchester City. Park Casper. Sure. Two additional minutes which are into now. Hemp. 
Hasegawa. On for Hemp. A third goal now would be a killer. Coombs. Here's Hemp. Well, managed to poke it through, and for a minute, thought Coombs may have been tripped. Whistle's gone. And Torres Dotsir is down. Yeah, Alexandri is uh, closest to her. Maria Torres Dotsir does not look in a good way here. Norwegian who uh, signed for Albion in the summer after leaving Manchester United. Vastly experienced international as well. And it's not entirely clear what caused the issue, but it's pretty clear that she's incapacitated for now. This will tell us a bit more. Well, don't they say that it's always the ones when there is no player anywhere close by that are the worst injuries and certainly looks to be the case here. Well, good that she's on her feet, but I can't imagine that she's going to play any further part in the game. Mikey Harris will need to make a switch. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can see there is uh, where the incident occurred. Well, with it being so close to half-time, will they try and uh, get through to the interval and then assess during the break whether she could perhaps continue, but... The way she got up, it didn't look too good for her. She is back on, though. We'll have a bit more than the two additional minutes that were signalled, but she still doesn't look like she's uh, too mobile for now. Something that City might look to exploit. Near the pace of the running from the likes of Hemp and Coombs. turning into trouble. Hemp. Well, Manchester City have a healthy advantage at the interval and are on course to move back level on points with Chelsea at the summit of the WSL. Mary Fowler's clinical finish coming after a fine goal from Lauren Hemp, who actually teed up Fowler for that City second. Brighton had their moments, but have been made to pay for a couple of slack moments at the back themselves. At the break, then, it is Brighton and Hove Albion nil, Manchester City two. Thank you. 
So Manchester City arrived at Brighton looking to get the victory that would move them back level on points with Chelsea at the top of the WSL. And while they dominated possession, Brighton had their moments against Manchester City. Elizabeth Turlin, who scored 11 goals this season in the WSL with an effort that uh, perhaps would have been ruled out for offside, even though it looked a tight call when the pass was played. Showing that she has the nous in front of goal, though she forced a save from Keating. And soon after that, there was another opportunity for Brighton. Lasada's free kick well delivered. Berg's fan got there, but couldn't quite get the connection on the effort. Goldwoods with Kirsten Kasparai doing her defensive work well to ensure she couldn't get a clean strike at it. Brighton were enjoying their best uh, period of the game at that stage of the match but just before the half hour mark they fell behind Brighton trying to play out from the back and when they lost possession City were quickly up the field Jess Park spotted the run of Hemp a perfect pass and Hemp's near post finish just wriggled beyond Sophie Bagley he may be disappointed that she wasn't able to keep it out Hemp with three goals in her last four WSL matches. Now she got the winner against Everton in their last league game and was on target here, the England international, after that fine pass by Park. But uh, Bagley seemed a bit uh, annoyed with herself at not being able to keep that one out. Uh, bang onto the turf after it went beyond her. It was a close call on 36 minutes when a corner was met by Alex Greenwood. Her header cleared off the line by Zigiotti. She found herself in just the right spot with Bagley beaten. Really good corner and Greenwood's header would have drifted in had Zigiotti not uh, retreated to the goal line to make the clearance. The title challengers uh, were showing their class now and we're starting to create a number of opportunities Kirsten Kasparai forwards well from full back here her effort repelled by Bagley who got two hands to it to keep the Dutch international at bay from long range but soon after that Manchester City did have their second goal it was Mary Fowler who made the most of some fine work by Hemp out wide. Brighton again, guilty of giving the ball away cheaply, straight from the goalkeeper. And look how quickly City combined to get themselves into that crossing position for Hemp. And her ball in was inch perfect for Fowler who finished clinically. Really good goal from City's point of view. Very, very avoidable from a Brighton perspective. City nearly had a third before the interval as well. Again, it was Lauren Hemp who was front and centre as she refused to give up what looked like a lost cause. Khadija Shaw then teed up Fowler and her effort was blocked by Emma Kulbert. Manchester City on course to go level on points with Chelsea, leading 2-0 at half-time.
Manchester City with a lot more of the ball in the first half. 77% possession for the visitors and 11 shots to one as well. Five of the City efforts have been on target too. Brighton are yet to register an attempt on target themselves. Well, this Barclays Women's Super League weekend kicked off on Friday night as Arsenal travelled to Stamford Bridge to face Chelsea. Ben Andrews watched the drama unfold. Need being pressured by Neve Charles. And they're right in putting the pressure on two, and it's worked. And here's Laurel James. Surrounded by Arsenal players, doesn't usually bother up. James does get the shot away, and it's in! The champion strike first at Stamford Bridge, where Lauren James is the queen. Yet another goal here for her, eight of her 13, and a big one at the bridge in the battle of first and third here. I am sure Zinsberger will be disappointed with that, though. Yes, it's powerful. It's really powerful. It could have gone anywhere. It's ended up in the back of a net. Brilliant. Typical balance and grace, but with power from James. This is right. Trying to tease one in there for Kanarud. This is Cuthbert. Oh, and Noose getting in. And she's onside. It's going to count. It's 2-0. Arsenal hoping for a flag, Cuthbert's dragged it, but Nuskin has glanced it. Clever improvisation. Chelsea! Arsenal shell shocked and now they've given the ball away again as uh, Kanarud comes forward. It's a threat of three on three here. Johanna Ritten, Kanarud. Oh, it's deflected and it's in! Really clever from Nuskin for the 2-0 goal. She didn't know anything about this one. Arsenal, their own worst enemies, though. And in 15 minutes, this six-pointer has become a non-contest. It's Chelsea 3, Arsenal 0. Kennerud, pace been an issue all night long and she's coming through here with plenty of it it's a good stop that from Zinsberger Charles being chased down by Lacasse and she's popped it through and there's no flag here Lauren James for four one-on-one, -on -one, Zinsberger does it again to keep it respectable for Arsenal. A lovely way to pass from Neve Charles here for Guru Wright. Fox chasing her, but completely done. Can a road! Well, if it wasn't for Zinsberger in this second half, this would have been an embarrassment for Arsenal, as opposed to just a heavy defeat. with the corner and that's Kim Little and it's flashed in via another deflection on a night of glancing blows I don't think this is gonna change anything other than the fact that Chelsea don't have a clean sheet it's off Macario it was heading wide it's 3-1 So, as you saw there, Chelsea beat Arsenal by three goals to one in the big game at the top of the table. Everton were beaten 2-1 at home by Aston Villa, meanwhile. And in terms of the current scores at the moment, Liverpool lead West Ham by two goals to nil. Kiernan and Missy Bokerns on target for them. There's about an hour gone there and about 23 minutes left to play between Manchester United and Bristol City. Nelson's goal, the difference in that one.
this is what it means for the table as things stand. Manchester City would be level on points with Chelsea behind them on goal difference. Brighton and Hove Albion would remain in ninth. So Manchester City 2-0 up against Brighton. The second half is coming up shortly. So Manchester City, two goals up at the interval against Brighton and Hove Albion. Those supporters hoping for a remarkable turnaround. They did see them score three late goals against Bristol City last time out, but this is a very different challenge for Mikey Harris's side today. Lauren Hemp, scorer and creator in the first half. From a Brighton perspective, they did a lot of things right, but they let their guard down a couple of times and have paid the price for it. Set to be yet another defeat at home to Manchester City, who have won all four of their away games previously against the club in the WSL. 21-2, the aggregate score in City's favour across those four victories prior to this latest encounter between the clubs. Well, Maria torres Dotti was struggling before half-time. And uh, the change was pretty much inevitable, and Lee Mengwen is the replacement. Pinto, barely been able to get much room to make something happen for Brighton going forwards. And that one comes to nothing. Zikiotti. 
had that period where they pushed up the pitch a bit higher and seemed to have a, a bit more joy as a result. Yuming went the replacement. Torres Dottir, the very experienced Norwegian international, former United player, of course, so this uh, a game that would have meant a lot to her. Another of the summer signings is uh, on in her place, the Chinese international Li Mengwen. Bergsman. Here is Mengwen. Robinson. And that was a good battle between her and Uahabi. And it's off Uahabi for a Brighton throw. Hemp, full of industry and endeavour as ever. Good by Keating. That's broken for sure. Tidied up by Carabali. Valley back to Bagley. Now Bergsvan quickly closed down by Fowler. And City applying the squeeze here. Brighton have managed to escape though. Carapalli. Vicky Lasada. Zigiotti. Well, set to be ten victories in a row in the WSL. Only once before has the team managed that, and it was Manchester City who did so when they ran 12 in a row in the 2020 to 21 campaign. Alexandri, Preston Kasparai, here's Mary Fowler. Shook off the challenge nicely short. Popped out wide to Hemp. Hemp having a run at uh, Li Mengwen. Hemp, good drop of the shoulder. Lauren Hemp! Oh, so close to a stunner. Greenwood. That would have killed off the game as a contest once and for all, really. That's a Gower. Park. Still Park. And Bagley behind it. Well, Sophie Bagley able to easily gather that one. She was nowhere near this hit from Hemp. Lovely little dummy to create the pocket of space. And it was almost inch perfect when she went for the curler. Kasparai. Fowler. Jess Park now. Real hammered clearance from Carapalli. Greenwood. Oh, dominance 
from Manchester City when it comes to opportunities created. 13 shots to one, and six of them on target. Brighton yet to test Kiara Keating. Hasegawa. Now Park. Feeding Wahabi. Stretch Coombs couldn't keep it in, and Perksman lets it run behind. Well, Manchester City with a couple of goals, Katija Shaw not involved in either of them, which uh, doesn't happen often. Robinson dropping deep to try and make something happen for Brighton. Coulbert up against Fowler. And getting no change out of her. Shaw was interested in that. Caravalli was quickly across. And that's a Brighton free kick for the challenge by Kasparite. Alexandri Fowler now Park back to Fowler they've worked that well Shaw waits in the middle Casper is an option here she is Shaw laid it off and Coombs effort blocked by Bergsman Manchester City corner after a lovely move from Gareth Taylor's side slice their way through the Brighton back line here Shaw was unselfish, and Bergsman was in the way from Coombs. Tricky one for the keeper, helped out by Caraballi. Coombs! Manchester City and Brighton right where they want them. Greenwood, lovely ball. Fowler. Casper wants it, here she is. Already went close with a long ranger earlier. Offloads for Hemp. Inviting. Shaw was up there. City looking for the killer third. They won't get it from that attack because the whistle has gone. Mikey Harris likes to try and get them to express themselves in terms of playing out from the back, but a couple of times they've been a bit too ambitious in that regard and almost paid the price. Greenwood. Greenwood again. Alexandri for Casper right down to walking pace for Manchester City, who are strolling through this game now. No 
goalkeeper goes Coombs. Referee gives it the other way, which she's a bit perplexed about. Coombs here felt that she'd been tripped by Lasada. I think the free kick was given for handball against Coombs, but certainly seemed to be a bit of contact, accidental or otherwise. Colbert. Nearly dispossessed by Park, but she's poked it into Lasada nicely. Zigiotti heave forwards for the run of Madison Haley. Kasparai had the pace to beat her to it. Lasada. Get the feeling that City do still have another couple of gears to go into to reach their absolute top level. Haven't needed to raise their game to that particular stage as of yet. Bagley has it. Bergsvam. Touched off by Madison Haley. Almost sent around the corner for Kulper, who had adventured forwards from left back. The goal difference, potentially having a big say in the title race, with it being so tight at the top between uh, Chelsea and Manchester City. Or if they might gamble and really try and go for it to rack up a few more goals. Even the Brighton have offered nothing going forwards. No shots on target so far for them. Greenwood approaching the hour mark. Casperi. by Coombs, dispossessed though by Zigiotti. Kulper busting a gun to get up there. Look who's back to nick it back for City. Lauren Hemp once again. Coombs Pass was on there to Fowler, but she played it too close to Lee Meng Wen. Clipped in by Hasegawa, Shaw waiting. Hemp. And still. She was caught in two minds there, I think. Didn't know whether to pass or have a ping. Did neither and ran into traffic. Caravalli. Zigiotti lifts it forwards. No flag for now. And now the flag is raised against Katie Robinson.
Then it looked fairly close. And cometh the hour, cometh some changes for Brighton and Hove Albion. Madison Haley has uh, struggled to make much of an impact going forwards. And there is a player who knows how to find the net against Manchester City in the shape of Gumin Lee. Also on is Maisie Simmons. more attacking bite to this Brighton side. <laughs> Lee, who was the scorer of the only goal of the game in that surprise victory away at Manchester City in November. It came in the 81st minute. Here's Fowler, meanwhile. Fowler again. She's gone for goal. And just a touch too high with the effort. Not a bad try from Fowler. We're going back to uh, Lee Gun Min, who played three games in the WSL for Manchester City back in 2019. She has scored or assisted in all four of her appearances in the league against her old club. Two goals and two assists, and directly involved in each of Brighton's last four league goals against Manchester City as well. So talk about having a good record. What can she do for the remaining half an hour of this match. Hemp, star performer so far today. Park. And there is uh, Lee Gun Min. to push a bit further up the pitch with Lee Gun Min leading the press. <laughs> Clipped up towards the uh, runner of Lee Gun Min. Short. Gets there ahead of Carapalli. Oh, and will she tug back there? Referee has given a free kick on the edge by the looks of it. Well, if she's awarded the foul there, I feel that it continued into the penalty area, so that's a bit of a let-off for the Colombian defender who picks up the first yellow of the game. You look at this here yes it starts outside but I'm pretty sure that that continues inside the area this will tell us more arms on her here and there's definitely still contact inside the box you could argue about whether it was a foul or not but if you give the foul it should be a penalty kick she is a lucky player
Greenwood to have a go! Beaten away by Pagali. Now the counter might be on here. Katie Robinson on her own for now. Hasegawa holds her up. Robinson in the end was outnumbered and outmaneuvered. Keating, that she'll let it run for Greenwood. Midway through the second half of Manchester City, still very comfortable. Greenwood. up by Colbert. Wide by Lee Gung Min. Robinson. Bagley. to short Kasparai Kasparai for Park back to Fowler Greenwood Hasegawa, Fowler, finding Park nicely, Shaw waits in the middle, and covering was Carapalli. This was that strike from Greenwood, which Pagali uh, got fully behind. Useful ball, and there's the third, and Khadija Shaw gets her customary goal against Brighton and Hove Albion. Can't remember her having a clear opportunity in front of goal this afternoon. As soon as one came along, she found the net. That is now seven goals in five games against Albion in the WSL. And once more, Brighton simply switched off here. Far too much room for Yui Hasegawa to pick the pass. And it was too easy for Khadija Shaw at the back stick to get up and get a free header. And once she got there, it was always going to be a powerful effort. One that was too powerful for Bagley to keep out. A straightforward goal for Manchester City on what has turned out to be a fairly straightforward afternoon. Opportunity for Turlin to stretch her legs. Robinson waits in the middle. Turlin can't find her. Gilbert waits to take the throw.
Here's Bergsvall. Pulled there. Sigiotti. Ligon Min. Kulper's pass and uh, offside against Pinto. Been called offside a number of times today, Brighton. Tillen moving out to the left hand side with uh, Ligon Min playing through the middle to try and find a way back into this star studded Manchester City bench. Sits and waits. back to uh, Carapalli. Folks found wearing the skipper's armband after the removal of Vicky Lasada. Back from Horlin Carapalli. Bagali. That's some pass, you know, and it's unfortunate that she was unable to keep it in, Li Mengwen. Bad if you've got the likes of Chloe Kelly able to be brought on from the bench. Been a regular goal for her against Brighton and Hove. Albion Khadija Shaw's goal takes her to 17 for the season so far. She's comfortably ahead in the race for the Golden Boot. Alexandri given away. Ugo Min stepping in. Berg's fan. Next time that uh, Manchester City step out, it will be in the derby. They face Manchester United on the home turf. In uh, a week's time, it's an early kickoff on the Saturday, so. It will give Manchester City the opportunity to go top of the table temporarily at least with Chelsea not in action until the following day when they travel to West Ham. So psychologically, that will be something that is big motivation for Gareth Taylor's team that they can rise to the summit. They could still go to the top of the table tonight with another three unanswered goals, which is certainly not beyond their abilities. Ligon Min beaten to it by Greenwood. As for uh, Brighton, well, their next engagement is away to 
Leicester City in a week's time. Leicester City side who are only just above them in the table. 16 points they're currently on. Brighton on 14. Leicester away to Spurs in the final game of the day today. Berg's fans ball. And uh, Lee Gun Min hasn't been able to really do her usual thing of uh, getting all over the centre halves and pressing and bullying and harrying. Lee Gun Min. Pinto. Liga Min, that's a clever pass. Well read though by Leia Alexandri as Manchester City look to protect their clean sheet. Greenwood. <laughs> On from Kasparai. Fowler. Oh, it's four. Laura Coombs gets in on the act to finish off a slick City move. Well, after that cup disappointment, they are right back at it in the WSL. And they are moving back level on points with Chelsea at the summit in style. Kasparai on for Fowler, her cutback was into the perfect place for Laura Coombs, who swept it home first time with the minimum of fuss. Manchester City hit four at Brighton, and there is still time for them to get more goals that might well send them clear at the top tonight. Fine strike from Coombs. And they have scored some excellent goals today. City have made some changes. Coombs, one of those who has uh, departed in the wake of that goal. <laughs> Looking for more here, City. Kelly, who's just come on, looking for an immediate impact. Goes to ground. Final 10 minutes, and Manchester City have responded just the way Gareth Taylor would have wanted. Here's confirmation of the changes. Coombs and Hemp, two of the goal scorers for City today, taken off. Chloe Kelly, who you saw going through just now, one of those on. And also, it is Laura Glinkiller Brown. Close down. Brown was after it. 
A chastening experience for Brighton have also made a switch with uh, Sari, who was uh, dropped from the starting lineup, coming on. And uh, she replaces Tatiana Pinto. Now the City fans still hungry for more goals. One more would make it level on goal difference, and they'd only be behind Chelsea on goals scored. It's Brighton who are on the attack here, and once again the flag is raised against Elizabeth Turland. Valley might count herself a bit fortunate to be going off as a substitution rather than having been dismissed. Grace McEwen steps in for her. And Manchester City are making a triple change here as we go into the final few minutes. Yui Hasegawa, who's set up the uh, goal that Khadija Shaw headed home. One of those coming on, as is Alana Kennedy. And Esme Morgan, the other, to uh, get a late run out as well. So the full complement of alterations now used by Gareth Taylor. Here's Kelly. Read by Alana Kennedy. Substitutes look hungry to try and make an impact. Useful ball that. Robinson, who's been a willing runner all afternoon, though, gets. No change out of Uahabi. Here's confirmation of that triple change for Manchester City. Shaw bundled over. Kasparai and Alexandri amongst uh, those who were taken off. Esme Morgan and Alana Kennedy were brought on. Yui Hasegawa replaced by Ruby Mace. Shaw has grown in uh, stature as the game has gone on. And the only way that she could be stopped was illegally by Grace McEwen there. Looking ball, 
Kelly's waiting on the edge. Shaw's up there. Shaw's hit. Deep one, too deep. So level on points and one goal between Chelsea and Manchester City as uh, we head towards the home straight of the WSL campaign. Nearly a pocket pick there. In steps Linkilla Brown. Back to back 4 0 defeats against teams from Manchester is the way things are shaping up for Brighton and Hove Albion. Then they were swatted aside at home by Manchester United in the FA Cup. Last uh, time out. Well, that was the game that they were four down after just an hour's play. We've got one more game against one of the uh, big four to come, Brighton, and that's their final match of the campaign when they travel to Arsenal. They will still have designs on trying to reel in the sides in and around them in the likes of Leicester City and Aston Villa, who uh, are opponents for them in the coming weeks. Kelly. Here's Kelly. Away to Blinkilla Brown. On from Mace. Just 90 seconds now remaining in the 90 minutes. And what a good response it has been after those uh, really bad couple of days for Manchester City with those cup exits and it will remain now just uh, one win in their WSL encounters with Manchester City for Brighton one out of 11 it will stand out with uh, nine defeats in those 11 encounters a bit of revenge for City after their home defeat to Brighton earlier on in the campaign Right there at the office for Keating, who will be uh, happy about that after the mix-up later on that allowed Spurs to score the late leveller in the FA Cup. Five wins from five away from home against Brighton for Manchester City by a current aggregate score of 25-2. Haven't managed to score six or more today which is something they had achieved in three of those matches. It continues Brighton's pretty poor home record overall. This will make it one win from their last 11 on home turf in the league. And that's sole success against uh, the big strugglers, bottom club Bristol City. Four additional minutes at the end of the 90. a chance to put her feet up and deservedly so after her performance today scoring that goal and uh, she also teed up Fowler for the second now Turlin 
sends it wide nicely. Oh, and Brighton have a goal. Lee Gun Min has scored against them once again. Well, nothing more than a consolation for Brighton. But Lee Gun Min, the former Manchester City player, has continued her remarkable record in matches against her old employers. Well, she has now scored or assisted in all five of her appearances in the WSL against her old team. Three goals and two assists. Robinson. And it's a consolation for Brighton and Hove Albion. And it's also an annoyance and uh, perhaps even more than that for Manchester City, given that it affects their goal difference. They were one shy of Chelsea, now it's two. And in this kind of title race, those kind of margins can be the difference. It's a good-looking corner as well. They hit back across and Ferg Sram was caught in her heels, otherwise she might have had a shooting chance. Well, fair play to Mikey Harris's side. We have not just given up and uh, seen the game out and gone through the motions. Certainly she hasn't. Keating wasn't the greatest of clearances. That's been given straight to Zigiotti. He remembers almost in business again. And Killer Brown to Greenwood. Park. And still. Foul was uh, committed by Simmons and a yellow card for Macy Simmons as well. Hit by Greenwood and Shaw trying to get there. <laughs> Bergsman played the four additional minutes, might have a little more after that Brighton goal. Manchester City move back to within touching distance of Chelsea at the summit of the WSL. Gareth Taylor's team only adrift of the champions on goal difference after a comfortable success at Brighton. They took the lead through Lauren Hemp, Mary Fowler made it two. Then a regular goal for Khadija Shaw against Brighton as she so often tends to get. Laura Coombs made it four in style before Brighton got a late consolation courtesy of former City player Lee Gun Min. But they were well beaten today and Manchester City bounced back after those consecutive cup exits with a thumping victory. The title race remains very, very much alive. Full time then. Brighton and Hove Albion won. Manchester City four.
So Manchester City looking to bounce back after going out of the League Cup and the FA Cup in quick succession. And although Brighton made it difficult for them in the opening half an hour, their class eventually showed. Lauren Hemp was through on goal after a beauty of a ball from Jess Park on 27 minutes. Good finish from Hemp, although Sophie Bagley may well feel a bit disgruntled that she was unable to keep it out at her near post. Hemp was the standout player throughout, and it was her goal who got things going for Manchester City. About 10 minutes later, they nearly went two up. Corner met by the head of Alex Greenwood and then cleared off the line by Zigiotti. Zigiotti finding herself in exactly the right place to prevent Greenwood doubling the advantage. Another defender then went close for City five minutes before the interval. Dutch international Kerstin Kasparai scampering forwards here and deciding to chance her arm. And it needed the arms of Sophie Bagley to prevent it drifting into the net after Kasper, I caught this one really well. But City did double their lead almost immediately after that. Brighton caught out after playing out from the back. The ball whipped in by Hemp and Fowler arriving, stuck it away. Hemp, scorer of the first goal, creator of the second. But from a Brighton point of view, it was an avoidable goal as they gifted possession to City in a bad area and very much paid the price for doing so. Early in the second half, Hemp almost had her second goal of the game. Really good try from the England international after a little drop of the shoulder to create the space. Bagley well beaten, but it was just a couple of inches too far to the right-hand side. On 65 minutes, another opportunity. Carapalli was the player trying to haul Khadija Shaw back. She was given a yellow card and a free kick awarded, but on closer inspection, it looks as though Megan Wilson would have been correct to have awarded a penalty kick here as the contact seemed to continue into the Brighton box. From a corner, Manchester City made it three. Khadija Shaw with her regulation goal against Brighton. She generally finds the net in matches against them in the WSL. Brighton too slack when it came to the corner kick routine. Hasegawa had so much time and space to look up and then play the ball in. And Shaw was able to divert it in, having not been marked by anyone in white and blue. So that was game over as a contest with 20 minutes remaining. It was just a case of how much Manchester City wanted to push on to try and get some more goals. And they did manage to find another with 12 to play after a beautiful move was finished off by Laura Coombs. Fine first time hit after a slick City attack as they slice their way through the Brighton back line. Kasparai and Fowler with the last two touches before Coombs stuck it away. Brighton, to their credit, didn't let their heads drop. And Lee Gun Min, who scored the only goal of the game when Brighton beat Manchester City earlier on in the campaign, popped up with a late consolation. A sharp finish from her to give Brighton something to cheer right at the very end of the game. And who knows, it might be a crucial goal in the title race with goal difference potentially pivotal between Chelsea and Manchester City.
Full time, Brighton won, Manchester City four. So this is the tail of the tape, then Brighton with three shots to Manchester City's 21. The only one Brighton had on target ended up in the City net. The visitors with nine on target overall, and they dominated the ball as well. 69% possession for Gareth Taylor's side. Lauren Hemp was the player of the match with one goal to her name from five shots, two of which were on target. She also provided the assist for Fowler's goal, 11 touches in the opposition box and a 90% pass completion rate. So the weekend looks like this in the Barclays Women's Super League. Chelsea beat Arsenal in the big game at the top by three goals to one on Friday. Yesterday, Villa edged Everton 2-1. Today, Liverpool have beaten West Ham. Victories for Manchester United as well as Manchester City, as we've seen. And Spurs are currently leading Leicester by one goal to nil. So with that Leicester game away at Spurs, the only one not completed so far, this is how the table stands at the moment. Manchester City level on points with Chelsea and just two goals worse off when it comes to goal difference as well. Brighton and Hove, Albion meanwhile remain in 10th position. So Manchester City bounce back in style from those successive cup defeats. They are now back level on points with Chelsea in what is turning into quite the title race. From all of us, it's goodbye. <laughs>